Hi there, this is Jeff Fletcher bringing you some gameplay footage of a pretty cool black-white deck that I've managed to put together. Yeah, I'm going to feed the swarm this fearless fledgling. This deck's really good. I'll show you at the end of this game. It's one of my favorite decks I've drafted. Um, I just kind of drafted at a point where I wasn't recording, so I unfortunately don't... This is the first footage that I've got um, of it. Pair Patrician is definitely an interesting card, I'll say that much for it. Um, I've had a chance to pick it. I feel like there aren't that many Warriors in white, but actually the more I look, they're definitely awesome. I think it's a little hard to have Trigger enough to be truly exceptional, but despite that, it's kind of fine. I'm going to keep my guy here. My deck's pretty good at gaining life and coming around, so I'm kind of happy to see what I can do. That's sort of perfect, so... Let's do a spare supplies. And go for my expedition healer. Yeah, this is a nice option to have. Uh, convert mana cost 2 less. It doesn't kill this. Okay, notably. But my opponent's not in the position to provide this additional attacker. Could have lost my attendant healer there, but I, I likely... Uh, my next full of clerics, so although this expedition healer needs a cleric. I do have a lot of clerics to trigger it. Obviously I really want to get this life trigger here. Um, yeah, I actually think I'm just going to go in with my healer here. and see what the opponent wants to do. Just because I've left four mana up, I'm not really sure what to expect. I don't want to get caught out by a, a protection trick or something horrendous, and I feel like I'm already trading up and getting a guy, so I think it's it's pretty greedy of me to um, to try and deadly alliance there. The, the other place I could deadly alliance pre-combat, but then I might just walk it into a trick, and I think I'm getting enough faddy there, so just wanted to be a little chilled with that. And then this is nice, I can kill a good card if they play a good card, or I can just shit spare my supplies, so... Solve you... Yeah, I'm gonna get the supply run going. Okay. Ha ha! That is not the land we were looking for. Fine. Now I'll use my Deadly Alliance. I mean, they might have a protection trick here, but I literally can't attack unless I do it anyway. I'm also not overly behind. If they do, if they do counter that, then it's fine. I'll just live with it. Pretty far off kicking the Inscription of Ruin, so my drawing all planes is, is even less good than it might otherwise be. I'd obviously really like to play the Scion of the Swarm last turn. My deck has three Deadly Alliance and three of the White Shepherd, so it's very strong at the five. doesn't have any six or seven drops or more, so it's basically all its top-end goodness is concentrated at the five. I'm going to take four here, and that's just about fine. We'll also get to set our opponent back at a land drop, but I think, like me, he's not going to—he's not going to care. Um, huh? So, oh, this has—it's got reach and haste. It doesn't say vigilance, but it felt like it had vigilance. Oh, it's just going to block me up. Okay. Huh. So we could put this on the land, and then... It seems to suggest that it's, um... It can't be used as a land. That would be kind of cool. Alright, let's try that. So then we are essentially taxing the opponent a land here, which I kind of like. That's an interesting interaction. I, I don't think this can make mana now. Um, it does say activated abilities. Yeah, a lot of these will say non-mana, but it's definitely an activated ability to make mana. So it now cannot. Pretty good. Alright, that's going to... Oh, 
Wow, this is something I haven't seen. So, answer battlefield plus one. Whenever a creature controls plus one counter, it becomes target of spell with ability. Create an insect. Put a plus one. So you can just build this up, and then you can make some insects. That's really potent. Um, my opponent has a really good set of cards out here. I think first and foremost, I'm going to need to kill this Reek Razor. And I'm actually going to use the Inscription of Ruin here, because um, I'm not using it for anything else at the moment. So let's do this. Otherwise, this is going to throw this planes back and start looping mana. Okay. So it's going to have that whatever, and I, I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, yes, I will attack because my opponent has less life than me. I want to get this core celebrant now for sure. It doesn't actually do much now. Um, the raptor. Okay. Okay, she freed that land, but I feel like it doesn't matter anymore. Zendikon's gone. My enchantment's gone. Okay, fine. You gotta land. Really would love to <laughs> draw some decent cards at some point. Um, I'm gonna start taking a few hits as all well. my opponent will build up their swarm chamber. I think I'm down for that. I really, obviously, do need to draw a fifth mana. My opponent can pump the shambler. And he's going to get an insect out of this, which I don't really care about. So I think I'm, think I'm fine um, doing that. I know one of his cards will land, so if he just lets me off for a turn or two, I'm going to be in fine shape. I could vanquish the weaker as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll play this and let him build up the Swarm Shambler. That seems fine. As I'm pretty fine with him, just, you know, it's going to die soon. At the moment, I can block it, so it's unlike to want to attack for at least another turn and I can try and put it down, get my own attack going. I'm still well ahead of the game, and... If I ever draw that extra then it's going to be very very nice okay here we go I think I am just going to straight play this I think my opponent must have a kill spell of some kind like maybe a smite the monstrous is likely so this could end up a little bit sad for me but I'm still like want to try want to try and do it no attacks, obviously. My opponent pumps the Shambler. I'll just block with the little kitty if he attacks now. This doesn't trample. And then I'll have quite the air force to take him down. It's a bit weird that he's just held so many cards and he's holding this land. So I'm guessing, obviously, he's holding the land because he has Landfall Matters cards in the deck, and that seems fine. That much. I mean, you play the Tazim Raptor anyway, but... You, oh, okay, so we've got Bound. Okay. Fine. Oh, this is real strong. This is better than I thought. Non-token, but it's still good. My opponent cracks for two. I'm fine. Aha! Okay. And that's better, because now we can do two things. So we'll play the flyer. We seeing a kill spell right here. Mm. Not off this mana, unlikely. I was going to say I don't think so. I don't think you got the thing. Ah, oh, so we cannot vanquish the weak now on this card. Do I want to let my opponent untap? Yeah, sure. I think I'd like to kill at the end of their turn just to spend their mana. Um. I could maybe have got an attack in here, so maybe that's bad. But it's it's fine. Yeah, maybe I should have got an attack in. 
still think we're in okay territory. The good thing is if he has a fight or something I've got this available so that's still very good. Let's draw. There's the land, finally. So what, what three things do you have? Okay, no attacks. Let's try. Yeah, we got it. We got a bunch of removal spells here. A little of an odd one. Um, not totally sure what I want to do. So this is good if our non-token priest dies, but the thing is the marauding light priest I don't really want to die. Um, I'm going to kill the raptor and just try and hit for two. That seems fine. I really don't know what my opponent's playing here. I, I'm kind of at a bit of a loss. Because they seem to be not putting out many cards. Maybe he's just got a lot of lands, but then he held that other land for ages. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, there's a Felidar, which is pretty likely to get followed up by a land, I think. I mean, all I need to do here is draw creatures. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang fire. I don't need to do anything. I can even just attack with my flyer, which is great. Just try and put a bit more pressure, and then just draw a few creatures. If he's got a handful of land, then we've both drawn a lot of land because he's got five, eight, but then I've got like seven on board, two in hand. Maybe he's got two or three. I wish I knew. Um, I mean, I, I maybe played a bit over cautious here, but I really don't know what those other cards are. Maybe just land. That's fine. Our deck overpowered and pretty nice. So I did promise I'd show the deck. Um, this kind of falls under, I think, early format decks that you maybe shouldn't have been allowed to draft. I think, I don't know what other drafters were doing, what they were seeing, obviously, but if you just have a quick check out of this, I think it's a bit stronger than it should be. So in the vibe drop, first of all, three Shepherd of Heroes, three Deadly Alliance, and a Sign of the Swarm that combos with the Shepherds of Heroes. Here, two attended healers. I don't think this card is innately that strong, but in this deck it's very, very good. Um, two Vanquish the Weak here, um, and again with the three Deadly Alliance, and a Nahira's Binding, I mean we have like pretty much the most premium removal suite that you could want. Um, we've got Marauding Blight Priest to combo with the Shepherds, and with the Life Link on here. We've got Tabarax, that was just the first pick. Mall of Skyclaves, which I got past about third pick. I think it's pretty good, haven't used it before. I actually wanted more core celebrants, but I only managed to find one. Um, we've got another removal spell and just a couple filler cards down here, and of course the Malachar Rebirth adds an additional land, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's, it seems really strong to me. And it's got the 17 land because the Rebirth is, of course, land 17. So, yeah, I'm very happy with this deck because it's essentially just taking a Skies deck to black-white um, in that my late-game threats all fly. Um, I've got life gain, I've got turtles to jump the ground, I've got more removal than I'd have in blue-white by far, and this actually means that I've, I think, got better control of the game because as well as turtling some people up, I can gain a ton of life to get out of range, and then I can kill almost every threat they have that's any good. I mean, having, like, the double vanquish, three deadly, one Nahiri's thing, and a feed, um, that's, like, how many? Three, five, six, seven removal spells for pretty much anything on my opponent's team, so I just have a, a ridiculously strong amount of control. Essentially seven out of 23 cards. It's almost one in three of my cards can just pick any one of their cards and take it out of the game and that seems pretty stupid for limited just to be able to do that and, and just pick off whatever my opponent's doing this hand seems absurd so I'm very happy to have this missing a two drop but I go celebrant 
into healer, into shepherd and swarm hopefully, or the other way around would be even better. So we're suddenly keep seven, we're looking to be very strong here. Don't have a removal, but there's time to draw one. The green, huh? Okay, so he wants to go aggressive. I'm going to feel pretty happy about my core settlement versus that. The only thing I really need to do here is draw my fourth land. That seems like a big, big deal. Alright, oh, wow, wow, wow. So this guy's going aggro. We have drawn the fourth land. Importantly, this does not, thank God, have trample. So we're going to take five right here. Okay. We're not going to take five. What? When we, oh, it's whenever he casts a kick spell. Oh, this is loads worse than I thought. I thought it was whenever you cast a spell, which would have made it quite reasonable. But actually, it's pretty crappy. Wow, wow, wow. I mean... Uh, yeah, wow, that seems really poor then. Yeah, I seem to remember, I, I did check this. I was like, oh, that's good for that deck. And I didn't happen to be in that deck. I was like, oh, that could be, that could be a good board piece. I found myself thinking that. Um, now I'll definitely just jump block it, because why would I want to take five? Especially when I get three cats all day, every day. Hope my opponent doesn't have a removal, as this is a savage combo, as long as they can't break it up. Um, I could attack, but I don't want to. That's nice. Yeah, so he bounces my big boy, which obviously makes sense. And then attacks, and then I feed my cat. Well, it's the opposite of feeding my cat, really. I just put it under a bus, which is a bit brutal, but necessary in this spot. Go in, same thing. I mean, my opponent seems to have a strong version of the deck. Like, it, in terms of they've committed to making things kicked, and they are they are doing the business. So, I actually feel a little bit worried. I thought, man, this this card is bad. I've got to just beat this guy easily. Um, then kick into kick into get loads of free drakes is pretty strong. So, a trifle concerning. Okay, that I can cope with. It's, it's not a card with Kicker. That's a good start. It's not another Cunning Geese Mage. Might let me into the game a little bit. Oh, Deadly Alliance is nice to have. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'd probably want to play the Celerant pre-combat. If he had another Kicker card, he could trade all the Griffins. That would be a bit annoying. No, I think it's going to be fine. Oh, and that triggers off off that. Oh, wow, 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 wow. We will, we will. Okay, that's pretty sweet. So now my opponent just gets to get it batted. Right, feeling strong. I mean, my opponent can throw a bounce, but... Oh, bubble snare, bubble snare. That's that's good. So that's taken my boy out. But I've got some shepherd of heroes where they came from. Oh, that's nice. That's another Drake right there. I'm just gonna give a give a kitty. Do I even need? Yeah, I'll give a kitty. That is annoying. Yeah, I feel like I'll probably want my Shepherd of Heroes to come. Or rather, my, my Deadly Alliance uh, to allow my Shepherds to break through Drakes, because that's the one thing. I might actually have a little bit of a problem winning this one. Um, my opponent has some pretty strong stuff, like the Snarled Colony. That's pretty strong. They don't need much in terms of removal. I mean, if they had the control spell, I might be in a lot of trouble from them as well. So the knowledge economy could come, but it's not coming at the moment. 
I don't think I want to play this fast I add it for a bit. I want a bit of a break from their nonsense. Um, so, so cleric. Yeah, I might be able to go just around them with cats, like that. that's a possibility as well, just get enough cats to just kill them. Um, <laughs> that seems ambitious, but it might it might be the way. I'm going to have to hope they brick for a few turns, but it could be quite strong. I could probably at this point just let Gnarled Colony hit me as well if it wants to, just be like, fine. Because I was thinking to trade four cats for it, but I think I'd rather build up enough cats to just kill my opponent. The other thing is I can draw, if I do draw um, the guy in my deck, I've got two of the three twos that say when my opponent takes damage, the... Oh, so I got Feed the Swarm. Creature and Champ. Yes, please. Sign me up. So I'm going to kill this. I don't know, maybe they've used all of those already, but I really feel like I don't want to just face a horde of really annoying drakes. My opponent's got to be super afraid of like a pro blue spell on my side of the swarm as well. That would just be batty. I mean, he'd have a lot of blocks to be able to throw. Ultimately, he could block, block, block away, but... I mean, here I think I'm happy to trade my Mesa Links and a couple of cats for the Gnarled if it comes in. What the hell does this do? Well, wow, okay. Quite you then draw two, then get a two two. Okay, so the two two doesn't impact anything at all. The two cards are quite a big deal. He's got eighteen cards, I've got twenty four cards. He does get to hit me for a bit, but I really don't actually care. Maybe I care a bit. That is quite a lot of damage. Um, thing is, it's just not that big of a deal. Um, It does undo a bit of work that we've been doing, but we immediately get quite a lot more life, so it's not really problematic. It's just fine. We've got another removal spell here, so I might start thinking about killing some of his stuff. I think majoritively I just want to leave him low resource where I can. Look at top 5. You may reveal a card with kicker ability, put it into hand, put the rest on the bottom. Okay, and when he casts a kick spell... Right, right, I see, I see. So he could bounce my Shepherd and go for a nice big old attack again, which is, is kind of strong. He's, he's, he's considering it. What? Come on, fuck off. That's ridiculous. So what's he getting here? Oh, so he's fought my Shepherd instead, and that is also a kick card, but he's not looted. Okay. Well, this, this might be enough to kill me if I don't play a um, creature next turn, so... What do we want to do here? We want to definitely commit you... And you can block there. This doesn't have trample, so we're just going to do our usual for this. Uh, the Mesa Links or two cats. Two cats can kill this. Can't block, can't block, can't block any of those. I'm just making sure that I am blocking all the things that I can block. I really need to draw land here. I might be in trouble if I don't. Because I know that he can bounce my bloody flyer. How annoying. Yep, 
Yeah, so I'm, I mean, if I don't draw a land, I'm probably going to die. So I drew land. That's a good start. Now what's better? I mean, he's going to bounce my fly. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. That's nine. Fourteen damage he's got for me. So if I play... I only get these once. This is going to drain for one. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's fourteen, and I'll die. So instead, I've got to bind this guy. That will deal nine. He'll be able to replay it, but I wonder if Deadly Alliance is the play here then, um, and kill a Drake token, because then I can take seven. Now I need to I need to keep triggering this. I think. This game's been really tight though, to be honest. I mean, like, insane. Like, sure, my opponent's just had two of the inscriptions, and I'm still not dead. I'm still playing a match, but holy god, like, your opponent having double inscriptions is a bit fucking sucky. Um, I wonder if I can get an attack of some kind off. Nah, I think my opponent's gonna try and hit me pretty hard. I've got too much black mana for sure. Into the Royals his own guy. Oh, he into the Royals this, and now I die. Uh, failure in plan. Yeah, and I could have... I didn't realize this was any permanent. I felt like it was creature, but I should, I should know that. I should know better than that. Okay, I think I'm on my bubble round then with this insane deck. Uh, was that all my fault? I mean, my opponent had insane shit to get me to that point in the game, for sure. If I play correctly and dead lead it... Oh, God, yeah, I think that would would have been enough. Um, right, let's hope I can take this the remaining three then. So, you see an exciting point, I'll be very disappointed with the stack if it doesn't actually pull off the full number of wins, but... Yeah, sometimes when your opponent's deck's that good as well, I feel like, yeah, I made a mistake, I should have read the card. I felt like I knew what it was, because I was just familiar with it. I didn't think, oh yeah, he could bounce my enchantment, I thought he'd have to bounce his own guy. All those were, were errors. I'll keep this, I got two castables by turn three. But even so, right, I just need to find a planes, which hopefully I just draw planes right now, that'll be sick. Okay, that guy's good. Draw planes, not planes, but a playable. Okay, so we're going to have mana difficulties. I see how it's going to be. It just wants to feed us those mana difficulties. We don't really want to trade Tabarak, so I'm going to just straight in use the Inscription of Ruin on the Brute. It's a pretty good target for this. We can afford to take a few hits for two. Hopefully draw a planes at some point, like the next turn will be ideal. That is not a planes once again. Um, let's do this. I think I'm going to pop this at this point. Trading Tabrax doesn't feel great here anyway. Yes, there's a planes. Immediately rewarded, not punished. Question now is, do I want to trade this? I'm not. I'm not sure what the answer is. I'll see what my opponent does. So, can he make? Yeah, he can make me not block anyway. So, huh. Let's play this. I think I might get away with a cheeky attack um, and a life gain there and an instant kitty and then I feel like I'm in good shape now. Get my land drop. So I'm on all black again, um, but that's fine. Shepherd of Heroes going to yield me another pupper. Right, so this can throw its non non-block claws onto this, but I, yeah, I'm just going to block and trade, this is fine. So I feel like the only game that I lose here is like a pretty short game, and 
there's no reason to give that opportunity for my opponent to force me into a short game. I just want to take the longest possible route. It's also true that they've stumbled on mana now, so I feel I feel bad. Um, we all got our own mana difficulties to live through, and I felt pretty aggrieved with like the loss against Absolute Nonsense last time. It looks like that's not going to happen this time. My opponent's just going to get locked in to a bad place. Yeah, this card's bananas. So we can play the Celebrant. I mean, we could attack in the air anyway, so this kind of almost might as well go on a ground guy. Put it on the healer. Spice that up. Get in. I don't know what the opponent's going to do. We got nothing. First time I've actually played the Maul of Skyclave, so it's in a place where it was totally un unnecessary and I was under, like, no pressure. So it's hard to really... I mean, yeah, it's it's obviously a good card. I think it's pretty damn strong. But I still haven't really got a bead on on how good this works in practice yet, since that's the only game out of all of them that I've had it. We're now 5-2. and two. I'm more, It's a more acceptable place. If I drop here, well, then I drop. But I still think this deck deserves... Deserves the severed. I really need to earn that for it to make it my second seven. I mean, of course, it won't be a seven zero like my blue white deck was. That was wild, and that deck didn't even feel anything like as good as this. It was, it was infinitely worse than this deck. But let's let's aim at it. Take that seven zero down. Bob Bob. I've also gone into a traditional draft at the moment. I've got a pretty sweet deck there. I did that with my friend Shock. Um, he's picked up some cards and, and just wanted to get a draft. And so we had this one kind of in the in the chamber already. So we've filled that one. I've got a sealed on the go as well, which is pretty spicy. Uh, first, yep, looks good. I just love this combination. Like I, I actively now think that I will will reach for this when I can. Um, I mean, Core Celebrant seems super strong. I've got a draft where I had four of them, but it doesn't have the payoff like this deck does, unfortunately. But that was one thing I was lamenting in this draft was just like my kingdom for Core Celebrant, and when I don't want them, they're just raining on me. Like they're just for days. Core Celebrants everywhere. Um, but when I do want them, I can't find one for the level already. I'm not even going to block with this here. Um, I'm hoping my opponent actually spends mana to come around it. That would be great since I'm planning to not block anyway. No, they wouldn't, would they? Because they can pump it. Uh, they can pump their PNT. Okay, not blocking. That's a no block from me, bruh. And then, yeah, I'm going to instantly hit the combo. God, I want to draw Swamp next turn. That'll be savage. Yeah, they're reading this now. So, like, how does this work? It works how you don't want it to work. That's all I'll say, man. It definitely works in that way that you don't want it to. And I'll bot them. I mean, they got a pretty good attack force, but they're going to have to keep paying to pop through my kitty. Okay. That's pretty nice. I'll give them that. Pretty smooth. To be fair, I think I got away with that lightly. Uh, I'm not very bothered about how that's played out. I'm not sure they should have burned that spell there to avoid one damage to their face when they could use it for a much more profitable trade somewhere down the line. I'll take. And I could make them spend one for my cat, but like giving them my cat for one mana doesn't seem that good. Um, what do they make a coward? Okay, so they don't want me to block it anyway. That's that's great because they spent one, and I didn't have to do anything, <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't have blocked anyway. So that seems really good. I'm definitely not blocking now. Maybe they just don't have anything to do this turn. But then that also seems good.
should I run scared of that counter spell? Maybe is the answer. Um, hate not making a creature here. That's sad. I think I'm going to go in with everything. Oh, we got one of these. Those pause players are like, nah, 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 I want to just chill for a bit. It's like, okay, bro. That's pretty cool. So, cool. I was just checking cowards can't block warriors. So, this isn't a warrior. So, like, I can still block this, but I just can't block that. And that's fine. My opponent's slightly outracing me, but they're, they're not growing their board. And I'm kind of okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I want to do the same as it's not actually a winning a winning pattern for me. What if I yeah, and I'll hold both my little guys back to block and maybe double block the Intimidator, since if I was rid of the Intimidator's annoying aggression against me... Um, oh, this is cool, okay. So, resolve the four blocks. Kill you. Yeah, they kept playing like they had something, and now I think, well, at least I've seen a thing they had. It's quite hard to play against the tricks of the, the blue deck sometimes. This is just going to get to connect with a hit now. 14 plays 12. I'm a bit behind, but I feel like I can try to trade this Intimidator off, and if they want to put a trick and kill a Toka, that's fine. Also, if I draw a fifth martyr, I'm in great shape again, because I can just go, like, gain a bunch of life, play a flight, block a board this off. It's funny to get, be getting pushed back by a 3-1, but it's it's a 3-1 with a lot of little tricky things that it could do. What? Well, if I lose this, I'm going to be fucking sad. I probably shouldn't say that, because it's tempting fate, but what the fuck? Like, why would you lose a 1-1 to block a pathetic 2 damage? Like, that just doesn't even do anything. Maybe he has a sweeper that deals 3 to everything, who knows? This feels real bad. Right, I'm definitely gonna just double block with the kitties here. I wanna I wanna curb this damage and not lose to Cog and Intimidator. Okay. Well he's made one of them a coward, so I'll I'll take the hit. I don't like going to eight, but we could always deadly alliance or something next turn. I feel like my opponent's gonna throw a counter or something, I really don't know. I just like them to spend their mana on a mid-range dude. That's perfect. That's exactly what I would have liked them to do um, in the spot. That's that's absolutely what I wanted. Is that a warrior? It is a warrior. So my opponent can kind of like make multiple cowards now to just be a bit annoying. Can they kill me? Probably not. It's going to be close, actually. That's, that's a wizard, not a warrior, thank god. Yeah, maybe this was a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> it is just so annoying when people do this, and it's just a total waste of everyone's time. It's like, why, why burn clock on everything? Like, every single thing that happens, you're like, no, I'm gonna burn some clock. But wait, I've got some clock, I wanna burn, I'll just burn some clock. It's totally pointless. Doesn't achieve anything. I don't think you've got a reaction, because I know when summon's not in this format, and neither's for spike, it costs one and a blue. You're not kidding anyone. Sure, you can have a Zula portal list, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? 
Like, I feel here the answer is to attack with your warriors, leave this at home, make a bunch of things into... Wow, this grows fast though. This grows real fast, faster than I even thought about. Can you... Oh! Ahaha, <laughs> you can't do that. Right, yeah, this would be way more powerful, wouldn't it, if you could make the whole team a coward. I, I kind of thought, ah, oh, but you can you can coward the whole team and then I can't block it all and... No, it's it's not. It's not that good. I mean, it's it's still pretty good. I'm not going to do it down. It's actually done a lot. But it's not nearly as good as all that. And I'm definitely going to throw a block to rid myself. Because I obviously, I obviously win a longer game of any kind. So I just want to really not die here. I think that's all I need to achieve. I'm even going to block here. Like, sure, if my opponent has something and kills my sign of the swarm, well, good on them. They, they, they did a good thing. Because, like, frankly, once I start landing these back-to-back -back five drops, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win anyway if that happens. All right, nice. Okay. Accepted. So my opponents pulled out some pretty cool tricks. But it's just not going to cut it versus the shepherd that's going to land. Okay, so you can even give Trample to a warrior. That is one thing that I hadn't read about. Should have looked. We still killed one of their guys, so we've pretty much emptied their hand to oblivion now. Right, what about this? This is just going to make infinite dudes. Yeah, we'll do it this way. It's a little minor and efficient, but I love, I love this little combo. This is beautiful. And they all trigger all the things, and then all the things trigger, and then the things trigger, and... <laughs> I know that I don't want to block with the healer, so... I don't really want to block with the celebrant either. Can my opponent kill me? No, he can hit me for 8. He can get close, to be honest. I can start swinging back. So he can coward one cat, and then he can... I might, I might even trade this attended healer at this point. Again, it's all about, I feel like my opponent can't possibly win a long game against what I'm doing, but they can win a short game. So if they, um, if they get a short game played, then they might be able to take it down, but I just don't think they could take a long game. So I think here we're going to see them coward a cat then I can probably just put the healer on the cog and intimidator and trade it off. It's going to be a lot of heal points for me though if I don't. So he has cowarded a cat, it can't block warriors. What if I don't do this? He's got 8 but he could kill me with a spell so yeah I just, I just don't think that's a good thing to allow that and we can finally be rid of this idiot. I mean, maybe I should even throw the additional chump, but I think probably not. He's going to just want to trade this off, and he's gained trample, so he does me a bit more damage. Thing is, though, that is as low as I'm going in this game, and I feel like now this is going to put a surefire end to the opponent's nonsense. I mean, I lost, like, a free cat and a free life every turn, which would be freaking super nice. But now I can also chump the Scorch Rider all the time. And there's just nothing my opponent can do about it. Yeah, definitely the right decision, although it was a hard one because we lost quite a lot of value and it wouldn't have taken long, but all the opponent would have had to rip there is one spell and they could have won the game. They could have just done a plus three, plus two or something, and that would have that would have felt absolutely disgusting. So no way that I wanted to allow that. I could simply kill this here. And then this is this is a functional end to the game right now. 
when this attacks and just generates me a dude and then I get more life and gain life and yeah so now that now there's just nothing that the opponent can possibly have even like the respected inscriptions I think inscriptions invocations that nonsense even those things will not succeed so nice I think if you take anything from that game it's be patient and sometimes be willing to throw away value in the face of aggression and just say right you know I'm losing this potential future value because I recognize that I already have enough I've got as much value as I need but what I don't have is maybe the life points and it's like the reverse because one big message that I took on from my early magic is uh, after I stopped sucking and being rubbish I started playing necropotence in tournaments and I learned all about using my life total to gain value and then how that would eventually win me the game and I think that like a lot of people are very aware of that now but I think sometimes people think less about how the reverse of that is true, like you need to have life to use your value sometimes. Um, this is a nice opener by the way, I'm pretty happy with it, obviously want to play my 2 into a 3 would be very happy with that. Uh, we'll see what my opponent's doing, maybe Mesa Links will be better. Okay, I guess it's not going to be, let's, let's try. I mean, it looks like my opponent with this colour combination especially could be on a removal type of plan. But on the other hand, the chance to strike hard. Okay. They just got a good guy. Um, I don't ideally want to bind this down, but binding it down is kind of fine. I think what I'm going to do is play this. It's let me build my board. I, I think if they if this war leader is valuable to them, which it may well be, they possibly won't attack it into my blight priest anyway. Because I feel like I'm trading up and I'll just take that trade. Alright, so we're doing this. And then hitting for three. Okay. Valid. One and a knife. Which is gonna hit for four. Alright. No blocks then. Suit yourself. And now, yeah, we definitely throw that now the knife's been committed and get the attack on. The knife's, the knife's relatively good for this opponent here, especially as I've, I've missed drop uh, as well. They're going to pump their boy, and I'm going to take a hit. Uh, they've got all the little annoying tricks here. Not a few mana, that's what we needed some of. A tenant healer is a cleric, but I don't think I want to trade it that cheaply. Do I just do I play it? Um, yeah, I think so. Oh, this is a warrior. So that's why is this a four four? This buff is only short term. Like, why is it, why is it still on? So obviously, like, if I draw. I land next turn, that's great. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to double block into that versus a red-white deck. There's far too much chance of just getting annihilated. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to gain life. I'm pretty happy for that. And then we've got a choice of a Mesa or... I think I need to get a bit on board, so... The Lynx is a 2-3, what does that do? So we're likely to have like a, a land play, get a blocker of some type, tap down next turn and face a pretty nasty attack. So do I want to try and use my supplies? I don't know. Um, nah, I think it's too risky. I think I've got to just knuckle down. We'll see. And at least I can get a chump on with this. And yeah, that's, so there's that. That's cool. I think I, I don't really want to block with that guy anyway, to be honest. That's less cool. Okay, this shit is happening. Has this got trample? No, okay, I just really, really, really want to feed my, uh, my 1 1 to this then and probably take 4. I'm not sure that was their optimal use of those cards. It's just plus two plus O as well, yeah. So he's he's heavy in equipment. 
I got a choice about blocking this four four and maybe double trading, but I think for now I'll try and hang on. Oh, this is a cleric, so I could just throw it and the cat away into the outrider and how would that feel? Kind of fine. Yeah, okay. Fair mana, we're certainly not attacking. Um, we're going to probably just lose cats to whatever thing is equipped. Oh, so, yeah, that, that's tap that down. Yeah, I think she's only still got two attackers. Um, and we can afford to take four here. Maybe time for some equipping. Yeah, certainly time for some equipping. Right, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, you just want to build that up. This doesn't fly, does it? It looks like it flies, but it actually doesn't. Um, so we've got Deadly Alliance, which could be good here. Yeah, I actually don't think I want to attack. I messed up there because I thought I could just gain life, but I can't. This could be the game. Ah, phew, okay. He hasn't been able to stop me being able to block him, so... The fact that Cleric's going to die now, I can draw a card if I do, I lose a life. That's interesting. We may well be blocking with our Clerics here. Let me just see what the opponent wants to do. Okay, wow, 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 they really let me off there. I'm kind of surprised that they did that. Um, do I want to play this Adept? Not really. Um, I mean, I could play Adept and draw. This can get buffed a lot. Yeah, having the kill spell up seems good, and I need to start using these. Let's not attack. Obviously, if, if this is a land, not using the kill spell might prove awkward, but I really want to get my um, my Blight Priest back as well. Well, it won't come back, but I'll get a dude, and it'll be a 3-3. Three, three. Aha, so that could be really good, because I'll kill a dude and get a 3-3, so I presume he's kicked this. Okay, and I imagine he'll alpha. This could be awkward. No, he's not alphaing, okay. Sure, let's blow this up then. He's being super, super, super cautious. And I, I don't think it's necessarily right for his deck. So we can feed the swarm now and take damage. We can Deadly Alliance and not take damage. We can feed the swarm and Farsight Adeptor. He doesn't have a flyer, so I think the play is to... Lifelink the Shepherd of Heroes. attack. Because having more jumpers just seems really good. We're going to gain three there. And now we can use our Feed the Swarm to kill the McKindy Ox. Yeah. This does do us five, so we go to six. But now the opponent, like, we've got to block all their things, but we have a bunch of blockers and they also can't choose like, select blockers of ours to just remove from combat, which seems real strong. Like, they're going to be able to force bad blocks on us for sure. But we got some, we got some chump monkeys here. So I think I want to get in and definitely kill... this. So it makes, it makes me make a block that I don't really want to make. 
I see, I see. Um, it's kind of annoying. What he's got in hand as well. What if I we are going to get a trigger out of this. I'm just trying to see if there's anything we can do to. So this can pump a bunch. I think that's fine. We'll make yeah, fuck it. We'll make the opponent lock in and pay their mana, and then we block here, and then we're just trading like everything. But we'll, we'll end up with a cat out of it, I think, and the chance to draw some cards because clerics are dying and we also keep Shepherd of Heroes. So our opponent will just be left with a pretty pumped up Kibera Outrider and they'll have had to spend um, six mana into the T to Peak Ambusher, unless they drew something that fundamentally changes this, but it looks like that will be on the surface and definitely. So they, they spent their turn as well. They didn't get to kill us. We've got triggers and we can use them and then really restock and punish them. So let's take at least one draw. Yeah, and we'll take the other draw now. Yeah, so this is like absolute maximal punishing. Um, so we can play a wizard, draw a card. Make the deadly alliance cheaper and murder their outrider. And then just swing them with the Shepherd. Yeah, this puts us in a great spot, because even if the opponent has a Hasty, we have blocks. They've got to have a Hasty Flyer to make it truly problematic. So they've found a Hasty. What's to say? Oh, it's this one. This is a real deck. Um, when it deals combat damage to a... I believe it's combat damage to a player, though, so we just jump. Actually, let's not jump. Let's trade. Why not? Um, I mean, we're losing some life, but we, we just killed this guy off. Okay. So we still traded with another card, and that felt great. Just felt real clean. Um, make this in the land, obviously. Probably want a Deadly Alliance, this. It's quite, it's quite a good card. Um, yeah, the chances are they won't have another Haste, dude. Given that. Yeah, I think it's correct to crack the supplies. Get a card. It's an okay one. Blow this up. Still got Malakir Rebirth on. I'm going to leave my cat behind again. I just don't want to die to some stupid haste card that they've got. I'm going to haste trample, I guess that's it. It's curtain to me, but I'm not far off from a full recovery. Binding. Okay, that's the best removal they could have since the Malachi of Rebirth does not help with it. Now, with a bit more life and me having a decent blocker and a Vanquish the Week. I'm less concerned about some kind of haste, dude. I mean, I guess if they had a massive one, it could be awkward. But I could still block with the, the Shepherd. Wow. Okay, bro. I mean, like, if you want to spend a card on my token, I am totally fine. I really think that wasn't a good choice, but we'll, we'll see. Um, time will tell. So now a, a hasty that comes with more than free power has the potential to kill me. But I just, you know, you can't run totally scared. If he has it, he has it. Yeah, it still will kill me because I'm destroying more Vanquish the weeks. What I could do is, uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a way out. So I can uh, rebirth my own Shepherd and then vanquish it to avoid a big hasty and that'll be fine. I, I believe this yeah, can destroy my own guy but I've killed him. Yes, so you saw me got my second lot of 7th wins in my 7th draft. So it was a 7 on 7. That's satisfying. Um, I think this was the final punch through. Don't make me a liar. Oh, wait for the server. Could be time for a crash. Yes, that's it. Seven wins. Oh, juicy. 
Nice, 2200 gems, making it rain with the packs. Let's see what I've hit. Just gonna collect some Coke. Mm, Coca Cola, not yet my sponsor. Let's see. Rare wild card, I like it. Probably the best card that you can possibly hit, given that there's, there's so many mythic wild cards, like rare wild cards are usually the mana based wild cards as well. So actually, I personally think that a rare wild card is worth more than a mythic wild card, in my opinion. Lotus Cobra. Oh, a good one. A good one as rares go. It's probably one of the better rares. Probably. So, I actually think this card is pretty decent. Ooh, I haven't seen this one. Cost one of us to get a search your library of card. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it relies a bit too hard on the party and the cost starts a little bit high, but potentially good in a party-based deck. This card is a bit fun. I think it's it's mainly Commander thing. I think this card is fairly good in Commander. We'll see. I mean, yeah, it's, it's Dark Steel Ingot, which a lot of people play anyway, but then it's Dark Steel Ingot plus plus, so... Yeah, what am I saying? That, that's pretty good in Commander. I've definitely played many a Dock Steel Ingot and felt pretty happy, so it will be good. Wow. Well, thanks for watching. Glad to get to 7, and I will come back with my 8th draft video.